recording. So like I explained before, I do the recording for the summary on chapter seven. You can access those clicking on class meeting and then go uh, for chapter seven, the link. It will be automatically going to the uh, video recording that I, uh, I record this morning, okay? Um, that one include like a summary for chapter uh, seven. Also, I'm going to use the roadmaps chemical reaction. So make sure you, you have that one so you can follow um, how I'm going to do the, the procedure for the uh, different problems. Uh, this one is, is, is good because basically you have all the chemical reactions on that. Let me show you um, how we can do the access. So when you go in the row maps, you will have a PDF format that starts in this page, it says chapter six. So today, because we're going to discuss the chapter seven, we're going to the second page. So this first page is all that we have in the second test, all the reactions. So now, because we are getting uh, more reactions to the list, we need to uh, have this reaction plus the uh, reactions in the chapter seven. So we will work in the page number two for that row maps. And today, uh, I mean, you can distinguish one chapter to the other one. The red one is the one that is for the carbon-carbon double bonds. Uh, and the blue ones is for the carbon-carbon three bonds. So we're going to discuss all the reactions for the carbon-carbon three bonds, okay, with the blue ones. Um, that's why I, I want to um, be at the same time with this roadmap and also the PowerPoint because, uh, I mean, you can see all these reactions in the PowerPoint um, in more details in how is the mechanism, but like for, if you need to do like a problem that is a synthesis and you need to have all the reactions available, this is a good way to have everyone on one place that you can see, oh, I need these two ingredients in order to, to make from the alkene an aldehyde. If I want to do like an alkene, I want to uh, add some kind of allergens in the carbon-carbon uh, triple bond. I can do uh, these two routes. So it depends on what I have. If I have only bromine molecule that has two bromions, I can do a vecinal tetrahaloalkanes using this route. See, it's, it's more like uh, summarized here. So that's why I, I put up like another source because I mean, has all summarized here in those uh, charts, okay? Which is good in order to, um, I mean, to, to get more familiarized with those. But the only thing is that in here, we don't have the mechanism. So that's why uh, we need to go back to the book or to the PowerPoints in order to see each mechanism. Okay. Um, for um, for the PowerPoint, I also include like a summary chart, like I do before for the chapter six. In this case, for the carbon-carbon uh, bonds, some of these reactions for the double bond that we saw in the chapter six, we will see those again in, in the chapter seven because it's it's more like like a repetitive. Once you have unsaturated molecule, you can saturate it depends on what you need in the final product. So some of that uh, reactions you will see again using the same kind of mechanism, only that is changing that the initial reactant has a carbon-carbon triple bond, okay? That's the only thing. Uh, for example, if I'm going more in details, I, I'm using this picture because it's, it's more clear for me to go from one point to another one. If I want to do um, a halo boration and I have a alkene that has a carbon-carbon triple one, I can use the uh, hydrogen bromine in order to add 
one hydrogen and one bromine to the molecule. So this carbon-carbon double bond, I will have in my product that one bond is breaking and in that area that is breaking that uh, a bond is attaching one bromium and one hydrogen. So at the end, I will end up with a carbon-carbon double bond, okay? Instead of three, I have two bonds. Um, if I keep running that reaction because I have an excess for the halogen bromide, what is going to happen is the reaction that we saw in chapter six, okay? So from that, you can have that carbon-carbon double bond and also with the halogen bromide that you have in the solution, it will be keep going the reaction until you get the alkane with four different uh, substituents. In this case, you will have two bromines and two uh, hydrogens more. Okay, so uh, at the end, you will end up with an alkane. Um, another reaction that we have is when we use the, the dimethyl chloride with the bromine, but we only use one amount or one equivalent. In that case, you're only adding uh, two vestinal allergens, okay, in the different carbons for the carbon-carbon uh, three bonds. So you will end up with a carbon-carbon double bond, but you will have two allergens attached, one next to each other, okay? It's not in the same carbon, it's in the two carbon that has previously the carbon-carbon uh, three bonds, okay? One of each. Uh, if you keep going the reaction because you have another equivalent for the bromine, molecule, you will end up with four uh, bromines attached to the molecule, okay? So that's, that's, that's very uh, similar to the, to the different uh, reaction that we saw in the chapter C, so it's like more repetitive, but we have another one that is a little different, okay? Um, let me, um, going back, one new, are one new reaction is the addition okay. we have previously the linder catalyst for the uh, hydrogenation so we will have that uh, reaction also with the catalyst but in that case, we, because we have a carbon-carbon three bonds and we use the linear catalyst, we will end up with an alkene. It's not coming forward to get an alkane, I mean carbon-carbon single bond, because that catalyst is limiting the amount of hydrogen that you're adding, okay? It's different when we used before uh, a different catalyst, which is the palladium with the carbon, okay? Very, very important that. Also, a new reaction that we will have is the use for the uh, sodium or lithium with the ammonia. In that case, that is a very uh, distinguished uh, reaction that basically uh, when it's reacting, the sodium is making a radical in the reaction and is forming a trans uh, configuration. Okay, that is very characteristic uh, because it's using these ingredients. Okay, it's very typical. The temperature needs to be exactly that temperature. If the temperature is lower, it's not occurring this reaction. So that is very typical in order to get that trans configuration in the carbon-carbon uh, double bond at the end. Okay. Um, Another reaction that is also important is the mercury, the use of mercury sulfate in the reaction because uh, when we have hydroboration, we only see the hydroboration using the uh, hydrogen peroxide with the base and the water, and we will end up with some kind of aldehyde or some kind of 
mosquito. In this case, that is very, very selective. When you have a carbon carbon do, uh, triple bond that is a terminal, in order uh, to have an aldehyde, you need to use the hydroboration with the hydrogen peroxide that we used previously for the carbon carbon double bonds. But if you don't want to have an aldehyde like a final uh, product, you need to go for the other route that we use uh, acid catalyst with the mercury uh, sulfate in order to get a keto. That is very distinguished in those, uh, I mean, the hydroboration oxidation reaction, okay? Um, other thing that is also important that we need to keep in mind is how we can increase when we have a, a, an alkene that has certain amount of carbons in the main uh, chain, we can increase more carbons to that chain using a, a very strong base. And also after that, because you're getting an anion, you can add some kind of uh, allergen uh, alkane in order to add those carbon-carbon uh, bonds on the molecule, okay? One example here is when you have a one pentene and you add the ammonia to get uh, that um, anion, which basically you're removing one hydrogen only. And when you have a very strong group, they do the reaction and the hydrogen goes with the bromion and the rest for the molecule goes exactly where is the anion in the carbon-carbon three bond, okay? So those are uh, different compared to the uh, chapter six reactions that we saw before. Um, I'm using those, we need to uh, get uh, for the final product, okay? So, Basically, let me go back again for my. For my uh, summary. So basically here in this page, the number 37 in the PDF format. Uh, that we have for the chapter seven has all the reactions depends on what uh, we have. For the initial, so we basically we have a carbon carbon three bonds, and depends on what we want to do. If we want to do an anosomolysis, we can do anosomolysis with water. When we do that, it's the same thing that we have before for the chapter six with the ozonolysis. But in this case, instead of having a, a ketone or an aldehyde, we get a carboxylic acid. Okay. That's the only uh, thing uh, in the ozonolysis because the ozonolysis keep, keep going, the oxygen is, uh, the O3 is, is in excess, keep going, and that carbon-carbon triple bond gets to carbon-carbon double bond and then go for the uh, carboxylic group, okay? Um, so, Let's see how we can infer what, what we can play here in order to see uh, the final product. Uh, one area in this chapter that they introduce is the area for the synthesis. The synthesis basically include uh, different reactions in order to get the final product. Uh, for example, if we want to make like a glycerol and we start with some kind of oil, we can do uh, glycerol or the refrigerant that we use in the cars, starting with the vegetable oil. The only thing is that from going from the vegetable oil to the refrigerant, we need to uh, take different steps. Those steps depends on what we have at the beginning. We need to synthesize or do some kind of a reaction that needs to follow those steps, so it needs to be on order, okay? In order to get the final, which is the refrigerant. 
So here, um, what we have uh, in the box is the initial reagent. And at some point we want to get to the final product, which is this uh, um, kidney. When we have something like that, that has the carbon-carbon three bonds and we end up with a ketone, we need to follow some steps. So in this case, we can use all of uh, some of these reactions that we have before from the chapter seven, which basically is like more repetitive for the chapter six, only changing a little bit uh, because in here we have the, the carbon carbon three bonds. We can use those in order to get to the final answer or the final product that we want to achieve, okay? So in the synthesis, we need to start with the reagent, and then we need to see how we can get to that final product, okay? How many steps or how many reactions I need to do depends on my final, I mean, the, the intermediates, see? Because I'm, I mean, I start here with a one butene. One butene has four carbons, when I look here, I have something that has more than four carbons. So at some point I need to add more carbons to the main chain in order to get the final product, right? So using those reactions that we saw in the chapter seven, we can go to that add, okay? So here, what I recommend or they will also uh, recommend is going from, uh, from the products to the reagents is one, one thing that we can do, or go from the reagent and see, okay, if I have four carbons, how I can get this amount of carbons, okay? So we need to go one step to the other. So here they start looking for how many carbons they have at the end without including the carbonyl group, okay? We are not including the carbon double bond oxygen. We are only looking for uh, how many carbons has the main chain, okay? Because uh, we have four at the beginning and at the end we have six. So we need to make sure, we need to make sure that at some points we add like two more carbons in the main chain, okay? So using the six carbons, assuming that exactly in the middle has the carbon-carbon triple bond is one area and then go back. So we are going backwards in that uh, reagent in order to see what we, we do before, okay? If you have a 3 x scene, meaning that the carbon here and this uh, four carbon has the carbon-carbon three bonds, and we use the water with uh, sulfuric acid, we came up with an enol. Enol is a molecule that has the double bond together with the OH, okay, has this relationship, what happened when we have an enol like that, they, um, this carbon double bond try to shift it because we still having acid in the solution. When they do the shifting, they, when they do the shifting, the hydrogen for the oxygen goes in the other here position, which is making here a, a an electron to make the uh, single bond next to this other single bond. So we will have a double bond. And this hydrogen is shifting to this carbon key, which is making this CH a CH2, okay? That procedure is called, is called the autonomization reaction, which in the chapter seven, we saw that, okay, let me go here to uh, explain you where we saw that. Mm. 
is in this area here, but if we go at the beginning of the chapter, when we have, remember, when we have a carbon-carbon double bond and we have water and sulfuric acid, what we are doing is forming an alcohol group with a hydrogen. In this case, because we have a carbon-carbon three bonds, we are forming an enol, which is adding a hydrogen, okay? But in this case here, because it's a triple bond, it's forming a double bond. So it will add an OH group and a hydrogen. But the only thing is that this triple bond is converting to a double bond. That is the enol formation. And when you have an enol formation, it's going to do the shifting to the tautomerization, which is here, which basically uh, shows how they go from the carbon-carbon double bond, they do the shifting to do the carbonyl group, okay? And basically it's because you have an acid reminding in the solution and that acid affects the carbon-carbon double bond and um, with the water around, it's making that shifting, okay? And it's forming the ketone at the end, okay? So that is very important. So you can see uh, in that case, when it goes back and the um, synthesis, that if I have an exine, I have six carbons, which is in the main chain. Uh, previously, in order to have a carbonyl group here, it needs to happen some kind of acidic water addition with acid in order to have an enol or in order to have a keto. Okay. So at some point, this uh, step happens. What happened before of that? Because this is the final product. So I have the final product. So this one. It's like the uh, intermediate step from this one to here. But before of this one, I need to add all these two carbons to the main chain. So using butene, one butene, I'm adding two carbons. So in order to get in the area for the terminal carbon, because butene has a terminal carbon here with a carbon-carbon three bonds, I need to use a very strong uh, base at the beginning, and then I use an alkyl bromine or alkyl ally in order to add those carbon carbon uh, chain extra that I needed. Okay, so I do the uh, basic solution very strong. Then in the second step, I'm adding the uh, in this case, the ethyl bromide, okay? So I'm adding ethyl group to the uh, final part in the carbon-carbon uh, three bonds because it's removing this hydrogen. So you get this uh, one butene in anion. And in that position is adding the ethyl group. And then you have the three XC. From 3-exine, I go here, and I need to do the hydrolysis, uh, acid hydrolysis, in order to get my uh, NO. But the NO, it will end up, because I need to do the shifting to the most stable position. And when they do that, you will end up with a, uh, with a kit, okay? So in this case, the synthesis has from here has one, two, three, and four steps. I mean, this one is, is one completely, so it will be three steps, one, two, and this one, three, okay? So that's why it's called a synthesis because it has three different reactions going on and needs to be exactly in that order to get from the reagents to the final product, okay? Another, Synthesis <clears throat> is um, in this case we have the uh, one butene 
one because it's the position for the carbon carbon triple bond. Butene because it's one, two, three, four carbons. So the alkane pattern is butane, but because it has three uh, bonds here, I need to change ane for ene. Okay, so that's why it's one butene. From one butene, I need to form the uh, aldehyde. In order to get the aldehyde, I can go from products to the reactants. Remember this aldehyde, if I'm going to look, I can go back in the roadmaps. Let's see if I have aldehyde. I can use any of these three, see? I can use a borobromine. I can use the uh, sulfuric acid with water with the mercury sulfate in order to get the alkene. So I can do any of these three routes in order from go from the aldehydes to the alkenes, okay? If I'm using the... Um, If I'm using this other route map, I need to go for the um, <clears throat> for the aldehyde. The aldehyde is this one. See, I have R, C, double go O, H, an aldehyde for alkene. Another one that I can have. Let me see. No, that's the only one because this one is the uh, keto, okay? So I can use the borohydrate with the uh, sodium hydroxide and the uh, hydrogen peroxide in order to get the alkene. So let's see how we do that. So in that case, so I'm, I'm going from this one to this one. If I have this one, the amount of carbons I need to look, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Because I have three carbons, this one has four carbons at some point. Okay, at some point, I need to have an extra carbon that I use as a byproduct. Okay, so when I'm looking, is what other a reagent I can have that is making, uh, I, I mean, I have here the aldehyde. So in carbon-carbon double bonds, it was one uh, reactant or one ingredient that it was making one aldehyde and one ketone. So I can have another plus here, another three, uh, product that it was a ketone. So if I'm going to see in the chapter six, I'm going to the roadmaps. I can do for that in order to get <clears throat> the, um, from aldehyde and ketones, if I have aldehyde and ketones, the only way that I have the uh, alkenes is in order to do the ozonolysis reaction, okay? So at some point I have something like that. And because I have three carbons and here I have four carbons, I need to add an extra carbon to make sure that I have uh, the initial reaction, okay? So looking for those, we can do a retrosynthesis analysis, I mean, going from products to the reagents and using that retrosynthesis analysis for what are the, my intermediates, I can see what reactions I need to come with, okay? So here I have the three carbons with the uh, carbon double bond oxygen. Then if I have three carbons, but in that case, this carbon has a double bond, I can have an, an alkene, a carbon-carbon single one attached to that area, okay? 
then from this double bond, at some point, I need to have a triple bond in order to add it. So that triple bond is very important. And how I add those two, uh, I mean, this ethyl group, because my initial reagent has only four carbons with a triple bond in carbon position one, so this one needs to be an ethyl that we added, okay, using the base and the uh, allogen bromine or allogen uh, chloride, okay? So when we do that, at least I know these two carbons is like extra, so we add it, and then when they do here, uh, the ozonolysis or um, the hydroboration is going to have that cleavage that is forming the aldehyde plus the ketone. But the ketone is not the main product, so that's why it's only one product here, okay? So that's why I need to analyze like that. And then that I have my uh, intermediate products for the different reactions, I can go to each one and say, okay, I start with this reagent. In order to go from this one to this one, I need to add these two carbons. The only way that I can do it is using the, uh, the base, and then adding the uh, alkene bromine in order to get those ethyl groups attached to that, okay? So that's why I have the base. And then in the second position, I have the ethyl group with the bromine, okay? Then from this one to this one, because this one, when you look, has two carbons, and then here has two carbons, which is asymmetrical. And I need that this one uh, give me like a cis position in order to have like a symmetrical um, uh, symmetrical um, heterogenation in the in the stereo isomer that I need to use some kind of catalyst very distinguished. So if I go in my row maps, in order to have those, from here, I have carbon, carbon, three bonds. I need to use some kind of catalyst or some kind of hydrogen with some uh, additional ingredients. So if I do, I have the triple bond here. If I do the, um, I can use uh, the alkenes using this arrow here. Oops, a little more deep. If I'm using my alkenes and I'm using this arrow in the bottom for the hydrogen with the lindar catalyst, I'm making an alkene, which has the carbon-carbon double bonds, has the letter F, the letter F is tell me that is giving me a cis alkene as a product. Okay. If I want to give to have like a trans, I need to use the other route which has the G letter. Okay. So going back to the second page, I have alkenes that has a carbon-carbon triple bond. Then if I use this arrow here with these two ingredients, I get the uh, cis alkene, okay? In order to get that alkene that I need. But if I use the sodium with the NH3, I will get a trans, okay? So depends on what is the uh, relationship that I want in my final product, I need to use those, okay? So I'm using the Lindar catalyst because I need to be in the same position, the hydrogen, so it will be with that. And then I do the osmolysis. When I use the osmolysis in the um, 
chroma. If I use the ozonolysis for the alkanes, I will end up with a aldehyde and a ketone. Okay. And in order to see how it looks like my molecule, I can look in details for the chapter six and see how they look like. Okay. But what it will be is that in this case, remember we have the carbon here, double bond. And when they do the ozonolysis, because it's a, a, this a temperature, what is going to happen is that the uh, carbon here is doing the shifting and they uh, add the oxygen on it, okay? And then this area here is making uh, the ketone, okay? Which is basically detaching and you're getting the ketone for the oil, okay? So, because that one is like uh, a small amount, you will only have that part, okay? And it will be a key. Here, depends on what are the products that you have. That, that's why it's good to do the retrosynthesis analysis. You can see how you going to add uh, some kind of areas in the molecule or some chunks that you need. And then you can came out using the roadmaps to see what happened from one step to the other, okay? Um, let me go. Another this design that we have is using the ethene, which in this case has two carbons, and then you adding uh, more carbons to the main chain with a bromine, okay? When you do that, in order to have, because you started with two carbons and you end up with five, you need to add three carbons more in the molecule, okay? And then you do a bromation using maybe hydrogen bromine or using uh, a bromine, okay? So it's like two steps that definitely you see directly from one step to the final product, okay? Uh, but let's go in more details. When you have the ethene, you need to see um, the molecule, okay? So you can do a retrosynthesis analysis, or you can go straight forward from ethene and see what you can have, and then go each step. So it, it depends on you, it depends how you want to attack the problem, okay? Um, but like uh, everyone recommends is using basically the retrosynthesis analysis because it's, it's more easier to see how it looks like your molecule in each step. So after that, you can you know, look what reactions you can do in each of the intermediate that you have, okay? So at the beginning, you have the ethene but because this has two only carbons and the bromopentane has five, at some point, this carbon here is the one that is uh, from the ethene, okay? Because has the bromine on it and then has these three carbon change here. So when you look, you see and see this one, it can be one substituent and this one, it can be another substituent, okay? So at some point here, you have a double bond, okay? So you have the bromium that is attached, but here it will be a double bond. Before that double bond, you need to have a triple bond because you start with the ethene. So from this double bond here, you will have a triple bond. So this one, it will be a triple bond. And then with the whole uh, part here. And then this triple bond, it will be only these two carbons in order to get the initial reagent, okay? So when you have the retrosynthesis analysis, 
you will have your final molecule. Then if you're removing this bromium, remember you're removing the bromium, you're removing one hydrogen in order to get a double bond, okay? Then you remove two hydrogens in order to have a triple bond. And then you're removing the extra carbon carbon in the main chain because you start with two carbons only. Okay. Now that you have the intermediate products, so you have four intermediate products, you need to go from each step using the route maps to see what reactions you perform. Okay. So at the initial, when you want to add the carbon carbon change to the carbon carbon three bonds, you need to use a very strong base and also use the alkane uh, bromine in order to add those. Because remember, this carbon doing the carbon carbon triple bond, it will be losing one hydrogen because the sodium is getting attached. And when they, they get that interaction with the sodium here, this hydrogen is losing and that anion getting the solution and is you're adding the alkane bromine and with the hydrogen, the bromine is getting related in order to do a single one with the bromion and the remanent for the molecule, which is the alkane, is going to be attaching that carbon, okay? So that's why you get these carbon-carbon three bonds attached to the um, appropriate group. Then you need to reduce or hydrogenate the carbon-carbon uh, triple bonds. So you want to have like a cis configuration. So you use the linear catalyst in order to add the hydrogens. And so you, you convert this triple bond to a double bond. Then in order to add the bromium, because it's only one bromium, you use the hydrogen bromide. But if in that case here, instead of having this only one bromium, you want to add an extra bromium, for example, let me say, If you want to add an extra bromine here, and this hydrogen, you don't have those, so you have another bromine here. The only way to do it is not using hydrogen bromine. You're using the bromine molecule, Br2, with the uh, with the solvent the methylene chloride, okay? In order to get that uh, bromine molecule, but it will be best now in that case. So here it will be another bromine. And here it will be a number two because I have a bromine attached to it. So I will have something like that. Oh. In the this is not the grahalo. So I'm going from alkenes to the vecinal de grahalo alkenes in that position. Okay. Here, because it's a double bond, it's getting attached to that. Um, okay. Other design, if we have something like that, that we start early with the carbon, carbon with the ethene, and we want to add the bromine, how we end up with this one. In this case, we only have two carbons. Depends on the amount of al alkane that we are attaching. We will end up with this 
kind of molecule, which is large, has seven carbons in the main chain and has two methyl groups. In order to do that synthesis, we can do some kind of analysis to see how it looks like. When you look, your uh, car, I um, mean, your original molecule has seven carbons. So at some point, with those seven carbons, you have a carbon carbon double bond. So it can be in this area or it can be in the other area, these two carbons. So you will have some kind of a double bond. Okay. What happened? Depends on what you have. If you have a carbon carbon uh, triple bond in these two, you need to uh, add the bromine in order to get an extra carbons. So if you have only this part of the molecule here, how I add this area? I need to use like an isobutyl. It is this part or If I want to add this area to the carbon carbon double bond, I need to add the isopropyl. Okay, so it depends on what you have. Remember, you start only with the carbon carbon triple bond. So at some point, you're adding this extra part and this other extra part in the molecule. Okay. If, for example, these are, it can be the isopropyl or isobromine, any of these two. If you start with the isopropyl bromine, so you have the isopropyl bromine here, so you have this chunk with this one, then you need to add this other part, the only area or the only way, sorry, to put this area here next to the carbon-carbon three bonds is to use a very strong um, base with the sodium and use the bromine alkane in order to add those, okay? We use the, usually you use to add any kind of alkane substituent, the base and then the alkane bromine. Depends on the alkane that you need, is, it will be looks like the alkane with the bromion on it, okay? So remember this one is, is like a R with the bromine. So depend, depends on how looks like that R is the bromion that you're adding in the solution. So this one is the R and then the bromine depends on how is the area that you need. In this case, you need an isobutyl. You're adding an isobutyl bromine, okay? Then to remove those carbon-carbon triple bonds, you need to hydrogenate. So you need to hydrogenate, no slowly. You need to put an excess for hydrogen. And when you use hydrogen, in that case, you use hydrogen molecule and then you add uh, palladium with carbon. That one, it will be in excess. When it's in excess, basically, you transform the carbon-carbon triple bond to a single bond directly because you have an excess and it's going and going until they completely saturate, okay? Um, any questions for that? I know it's, it looks like a little more um, things to remember, but that's why I try to match with the uh, roadmaps here, because basically 
you don't need, I mean, you don't need to uh, remember all. You can use the roadmaps in order to allow you to see what you will have at the end for the synthesis. And then, I mean, the roadmap is telling you exactly what are the uh, ingredients that you need in order to form uh, the final product, okay? In alkenes, all the reaction that we can do, um, basically we can form from alkenes alkanes, alkanes, or we can form also alkenes, okay? The other thing that we can form also is the alkanes, which basically you're adding uh, the allergens with the uh, alkane pattern. So that's, that's the area that basically tells you that you can form that. Uh, also, if you have an acid and um, water present, you can form ketones or aldehydes in order to get the final product. Okay. Um, other, let me see, other a synthesis that we can also do. I try to put different synthesis here. Um, if we have something like that that has an aromatic ring. Um, and what has the carbon carbon triple bond and you want to have like uh, an alcohol at the end. This carbon carbon triple bond at some point, you need to use an acid with water in order to get the alcohol. But this carbon carbon triple bond at some point, you need to have a carbon carbon double bond. So that's another thing that we need to think about that. So in that, area so when you do the retrosynthesis analysis because you have two carbons this is not like very complicated because you still i mean you, you have two carbons here next to the ring structure and then you have the same thing after so you have two carbons and then the ring structure so this one is only including the alcohol group but here is reducing these three uh carbon carbon bonds to a single bond. Okay. So you will have an alcohol, which is the final product. From the alcohol, you will have a carbon carbon double bond. And at some point, you will have your reagent. Okay. In order to get to that point, you need to do from here to here some kind of hydrogenation depends on what you want in your hydrogenation. You can do a cis or you can do a trans. Make sure um, what is the uh, intermediate that you have, okay? So you can use for a lindar catalyst with the hydrogen, or you can use the sodium with the ammonia, okay? Any of these two is okay because in that case, um, you only want to have a primary alcohol at the end, okay? When you do that, you will uh, have an intermediate with the carbon-carbon double bond. Then that carbon-carbon double bond, you need to form an alcohol. So that you're going from here to here because you're making an alcohol, okay? You need to look in the chapter six to see what you can do in order to have a primary alcohol. <laughs> but if you look in the roadmaps, let's see. In the roadmaps, I can use the page number one. I mean, I can use the page number two, but if you prefer, you can do page number one because it's more clear and also doesn't has the carbon carbon three bonds. So it's more like more simple, okay? When you have that, and you have an alkene, you want to do an alcohol. Okay, let's see. You have three rounds in how to do the alcohol. You can do this one, this one, or this one. Depends on the letters. When you look here, you need to see how it looks like your final product, okay? So the letters, what is looking here is the constrictions or the indication that it's telling me if the, uh, alcohol, it will be primary or 
secundary or it is uh, anti-McCormickoff or McCormickoff addition. So it tells me exactly how it looks like my final product, okay? If I'm looking in that, the hydroboration with the uh, base with the hydrogen peroxide and the water, which is the first row that I have here, has the letter C and D. C is telling me that is not anti makornikov addition to the P bond. To be non anti makornikov basically is telling me that the OH is adding in the final carbon, meaning that, let me go here, that in these two, see, these two positions, when we look and we need to add the alcohol, when you're adding to be a McCormickov, needs to be the addition, the hydrogen to the carbon that has more hydrogens. So the hydrogen goes here and the alcohol goes here. That is the McCormickov uh, role. But if you're going uh, contrary, which is the anti macornikov you're adding the OH here to the carbon that has more hydrogens and the hydrogen you're adding to the carbon that has less. Okay, that is the anti macornikov And when we go back to the raw map, using that is the letter C, which is the regiochemistry, and it's telling me that, that the addition is to the P bond, which is good because it's exactly where is the carbon-carbon position that I want, and it's not macornic, okay? So I'm using that because it's telling me exactly where is the location for the alcohol, okay? So I'm going back to the and I'm using that reagent from this step to here. So using those, I use the borohydration. Remember, borohydration has some kind of characteristic solvent, so it will be PHF. And I have the base, the hydrogen peroxide, and the water, okay, in order to get that uh, molecule that has the alcohol here, which is a primary alcohol. Um, when we do the addition, usually it's not like the uh, regular addition because the alcohol is gets in this carbon instead of the carbon that is more stable. Okay, so that's why it's an anti macornico uh, radioselective probe. Okay, um, any questions? No. Other um, reactions that we can have, let me go here, but we have hydrogenation. Here is a little bit more. When we have a carbon-carbon triple bond and we do the hydrogenation, what is going to happen with the hydrogen molecule and the catalyst has palladium as a catalyst, which is a metal, what is going to happen is that the interaction for the hydrogen gets in the surface for the palladium. And then the carbon carbon uh, P bonds for, for the triple bonding is going to interact with the hydrogens. Depending on the amount that you will have here for the hydrogen, what is going on is that basically is keeping. If you have only one equivalent for the hydrogen, you're only adding two hydrogens in the molecule. But if you have an extra, that extra hydrogen molecule, what is happening is that it's keeping forward that reaction because it's not completely saturated. So the palladium is making more uh, connection or more interaction between the P1 here in order to get attached those hydrogens. And at the end, you will basically get an alkane probe, okay? 
the ring structure that you have before and after is not getting any change. The only change in here is exactly where you have the carbon-carbon free bonds, okay? That reaction, if we go into the row map, it goes back in the page number two. If I have an alkene, I go for this arrow and then goes back here for the alkene. Okay, so that's the relationship when you have a carbon carbon triple bond, how you can saturate it with hydrogens, but depends on the amount that you have for the equivalent in the, in the hydrogen molecule. If you still have it more, it will be, you know, keep going the reaction. The only difference is if you want to only reduce one time, it's better instead of using the hydrogen with the palladium or the platinum, use another route is, that is using the Lindar catalyst or the uh, sodium with the ammonia, okay? So it depends on those, one, it will give you cis conformer sorry, cis conformer for the carbon-carbon double bond, or the ammonia with the sodium, it will give you like a trans conformer or trans isomer in the final product, okay? But using any of these two rounds, basically you stop the reaction only going from a carbon carbon three bonds to a double bonds. But if, if you need to have a single bonds, you go directly with the hydrogen and the palladium. Okay. Same thing is going to happen. It doesn't matter if you have a ring structure or you have a linear molecule where you're adding, you're adding here hydrogen and hydrogen, and here you will see those uh, single bonds. Here, the same thing. You will see these two that is getting a single bonds. And here you will have also between this carbon and this carbon, a single bond. So in this one, you have one, two, three, four, five carbons, so you will have a pentane completely linear, okay? Here you have one, two, three carbons. So in this case, it's an, an ethyl group that you're adding. So this one, it will be the ethyl group normal. So it's, it's a linear. Here we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So in that case here, it will be looks like the regular pentane, okay? And in here, what is making the relationship here when you're adding the hydrogens is that one double bond disappear and then the other double bond disappear having two hydrogens in each carbon for the molecule, okay? Any questions for that? No? Okay. Um, When we have the Lindar catalysis, the Lindar catalysis is like a complex that has the, uh, I mean, you can write it down Lindar catalysis or you can write it down exactly calcium sulfate with quinolinone, <laughs> okay? It doesn't matter uh, because some books, they refer to Lindar catalysis because that is the uh, name for those together. Or you can write it down both of the names, okay? When you have something like that, um, when you have something like that and you want to do the hydrogenation, you put the hydrogen, you put the linear catalysis, and then you will see what is going to happen. This carbon carbon three bonds is getting, you know, related with the hydrogen in the, uh, in the catalysis, and they do some kind of interaction with the, uh, one of the P bonds. And what is going to happen is that that interaction make the isomer to be in a cis position, okay? So it gets this form at the end. It doesn't get a trans because uh, this kind of catalyst is making that 
a relationship and is getting that isomer, okay? When we have different reagents, it doesn't matter. Um, the only thing here is that it's changing. Uh, you will get here a double bond, but the only thing is that it will be a cis position. Here you have one, two, three carbons, and this double bond here, this stays there, and the remanent goes back here. And for here, you will have a hydrogen, okay? So it will be both this area down and this area down, or up and up, okay? To get a cis position. Here, this carbon-carbon double bond, so you will have this one going down, you will have hydrogen going up, and this one is going down. So it will be in the same position, the hydrogen going up, it will be acid, okay? That's the only difference for that. When we have an amino with a sodium, which is the same that we have in the roadmap for the addition here, Okay, so with a, 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 a ammonia. When you have like that, what is going to happen is that you having a trans conformer or trans isomer. So in that position, what is happening is that the sodium interacts to make the radical, and then you have the anion, the um, ammonia get uh, attacked by the hydrogen in the ammonia and it's getting that hydrogen in that area. Then, because you're still having that sodium in the solution, is forming that radical in an anion and the remaining ammonia in the solution is getting the other hydrogen attached here. That interaction because of the radical is giving me the transposition. So that's why it's different, I mean, completely different when we use the uh, other uh, ingredient, which is the lindar catalyst with the, uh, with the metal, okay? Which is give me acids in the area that we use the sodium with the ammonia, it will give me a trans, okay? So the final molecule, it will be a transposition which basically is looking on a different, uh, I mean, alternate positions, okay? Same thing of this uh, reaction is going to happen to each one of these reagents. The only thing is that it's pointing out in a different way here because it's pointing out up. This one, it will be pointing out down. So it will be in alternate position. Uh, same thing here, it will be in alternate position, okay? So you will see this one down, this one it will be going up, something similar to this one, okay? Um, so if we have an IP, and we want to do an alternate position for a pentane, we need to use some dice of catalyst in order to have those. For example, here we have two carbons at the beginning for the reagents, and we want to have a product that has five carbons. So those five carbons, because I have a carbon-carbon double bond in the middle, that is my product. So at some point, this double bond, it, will, it was a triple bond, okay? So I'm going backwards in the retrosynthesis analysis. Then, because I start only with two carbons and I have these two carbons in the double bond, I need to add this methyl group and this ethyl group. So in order to do those additions, 
I need to add first one and then the other one. So I just say, okay, I add first um, the edit group and then I add the medium. Okay. So starting with the reagent, I use the, uh, the base with the allogen bromine, I mean, al alkane bromine, in order to add the ethyl group, okay? If I'm adding the ethyl group, I mean, these two, it doesn't matter if I start adding the methyl group first and then the ethyl group first, okay? Because I'm using this strong base, which basically interacts with the carbon carbon triple bond, even that I have the ethyl group attached to it, it doesn't matter because the reaction is going to be in this area for the triple bond, okay? So it doesn't matter if I start first with the ethyl bromine and then I do the uh, methylene uh, bromine, okay? After that, that I add those alkane groups in order to make my uh, my molecule for five carbons in the main chain. Then I need to see how it will be looks like in a transposition, okay? Or an E position. Remember, E, when we look in the E, we need to divide the molecule in half and see what are the priorities, okay? Because it's in alternated position, it's an E. If this ethyl group is in the same position for the methyl group, that one tells me that it's an CETA, okay? That's the difference. So depends on what I have as a final product, I need to pick it up what is the recipe that I need in order to get a, a, an E position here, like which is a trans position because this substituent is in a different or, or an alternate position to the methyl group, okay? So in order to use that, to get a trans, I need to use the ammonia with the sodium in order to get a trans position, okay? If I don't have, or I don't remember, I need to go back in the roadmaps and look and check exactly. I have letter G and letter F because I want from alkenes to alkenes. I need to use any of these two, okay? How I look for which one I need, I have these two letters, F and G. I go in the page number one to see what is G. G tells me, that is telling me that I will have a trans alkene as a product. F is telling me the stereochemistry give me a cis alkene as a product, okay? So it depends on the products that I need. In this case, and I need a uh, trans. Trans, pues, trans, I use the sodium with the ammonia. So I need to pick it up this recipe instead of the other one because the other one gives me a cis. Okay, so that's why I need to go for this one. And I convert it to have an alkene, which is a trans, which is what I need. Okay. Um, so that's why I end up with that. And if I'm looking, okay, I have one, two, three, four, five carbons and is a transposition because the ethyl group is in an alternate uh, location than the methyl group, okay? Um, what happens if I want to do an oxidant ring? For the oxidant ring, I need to look to see how I can do an oxidant ring. If I have an ethene, I want to do an oxidant ring. I need to look back and see, oh, let's see how I make an oxidant ring. Okay, let me see. I need to check. And when you do that, I mean, you can look in the chapter six and see what you need in order to do that. Or you can go in the page number two, I mean, any, any of these two pages to see how you get the oxidant ring, okay?
you have one, two carbons. You will have one, two carbons. At some point for the oxidant ring, you're adding ethyl group and ethyl group. Okay, you have two ethyl groups and then you have the oxidant ring. Let's see how we do that. Okay, for the oxidant ring, in order to have the oxidant ring, you need to use the peroxy acid. Okay, that is from chapter six. When we look, is peroxy acid. That is the only, I mean, news back on the on the line. Ultra That is the only one that it doesn't appear here in the row maps. We can do like an extra arrow in order to have the epoxy ring structure. But if we want to uh, go in the chapter six, the chapter number six has the the row map for uh, those reactions in the summary. Okay. Um, here, let me see if I'm sharing my screen. Okay, yeah, in the corridor. Okay, here, when you have the carbon carbon double bond and you use the peroxy acid, you can form the epoxy ring here. Okay, that's the only one that doesn't appear in the row map. The peroxy acid, and then you have the epoxy ring. That is on page 27 for the chapter six. Um, if we go in in more details, it will be before of this summary, but um, we will use that, okay? So we need to have the peroxy acid in order to have the epoxy ring. But what happened? We start with the uh, epoxy ring because that is the product. Remember, if we're going backwards from the products to the reagents, we need to start with the uh, product, the final product. Then at some point, because I mean, you have the epoxy ring, the epoxy ring, in order to do that, you need to have a carbon-carbon double bond. There's no way that you can do an epoxy ring from an alkene, okay? Or carbon-carbon single bond. So that's why we get to that point backwards that we have a carbon-carbon. So we remove the oxygen here and we have the carbon-carbon double bond here. Having those, when you look, this double bond, at some point, you have a triple bond. Because if you start with ethene, ethene only has two carbons and has triple bonds. So at some point, this double bond, it was a triple bond. So that's why I put another step here going backwards, like I have a triple bond there. Then, because I start with ethene, this ethyl group and this ethyl group I added, okay? Using the alkane bromine and the, and the very strong base, okay? So that's why I delete one. So I just keep it one. So because I have ethyl group here and ethyl group here, basically I need to do the same step two times in order to have this part added and this part added, okay? 
okay? And then I will end up with an it, okay? So in that, in that position, you can, when you do the synthesis, you have the it in, you can write it down two times, or you can say this two times, this step, so you will skip to this act, okay? Or you can do one by one, it's up to you, okay? Make sure you put both reagents because you will need also the base, and then you need the um, edit bromine two times. So you're adding edit bromine to one side of the carbon, carbon uh, triple bond, and then you're adding uh, another edit bromine to add that edit group in the other side. Then, because you need to have a cis position, because see how it looks like my final product. They are looking both at the same position, the ethyl group and the ethyl group is pointing out in the same. And hydrogen and hydrogen here is in the back. This, um, this isomer is a cis because this solid wedge and this solid wedge is, is telling me is in the same position, it's both forward. The hydrogens are back, which I'm looking in the priorities here and here, this one gets the higher priorities, okay? So that one is pointing out in the same position. So that is a six, okay? So using that, this carbon-carbon triple bond, when you do the hydrogenation, you need to get a six position. The only way is using the linear catalysis with the hydrogen, okay? If I don't remember, I need to go back in the roadmap or in the um, or in the summary and checking which one, which recipe, it telling me that I have a carbon-carbon triple bond and I need to do a six position in the final uh, alkyl. Okay. After that, when you have the alkene, let me see what we need to do. We have the alkene, then we need to look in the chapter six, what we need in order to have the epoxy ring. So you have this molecule, and when you want to do the epoxy ring, when you have a carbon-carbon double bond, you add the peroxy acid in order to have the epoxy ring. okay? So using those, you will end up with the final molecule, okay? And when you look, you have one, two, three, four steps. So because it has four different reactions, one followed to the other one is a synthesis, okay? Um, any questions on thing now? No, I know it's, it's like more repetitive, but the only thing is that, I mean, you need to start with one product and see what is, I mean, you need to start with the reagent and see what is the product that you need in order to follow different steps. I mean, I follow these steps. You can do another route because it's no, I mean, it's not a limitation. Only if they asking you for exactly it is a cis steroid isomer or is a trans steroid isomer. You need to follow some directions, but it will be at some point that you can do any of uh, two routes like we do before in uh, this one was in this in this in this synthesis. You can use either way, and you will end up with the final uh, the final product exactly the same. So it's not like exactly uh, one straightforward uh, synthesis because we have different chemicals, different reactions. We need to look for the recipes that we have in order to play with them to get the final answer. The only thing is that when you're doing the synthesis, in order to see how many steps you need, one thing that they take in consideration is the 
um, when you do the synthesis, you need to do the lowest, I mean, the lowest steps, because remember, every time that you put a synthesis, you will have some kind of uh, um, a loss when you try to collect uh, your inter intermediate product, okay? So if you're adding more steps in your synthesis, what is going to happen is that you can lose more product and at the end, you will end up maybe with a yield for 50% or something like that, okay? So to make sure that you get a very high yield, you need to try to get a synthesis or design a synthesis that, you know, when you start with the reagents, you only need to do a few steps and try to minimize the steps amounts to get very high yield, okay? Other thing that they consider when they do the synthesis is if the synthesis, um, I mean, the price for the reagents, and the other thing is the temperature. If the temperature is very cold or the temperature is very, very hot, they try to avoid some of that because remember those uh, synthesis when we're, we're talking about is not like a smaller proportion. They, they look for a higher proportion because they need to do some uh, products that they will sell later. So they, they will sell gallons or I mean, uh, kilograms, so they sell in a like a bulk proportion. So they need to maximize the profits. And one thing that they think about it is about the cost, cost of a production or manufacturing. So they need to do less steps possible in the synthesis while they, they trying to save in energy costs or manufacturing costs. So, you know, trying to think about when you're doing the synthesis, think about, about that. So less steps to get the final product in order to avoid that you're losing so much product, okay? Uh, I mean, here in the class, we don't take in consideration that, but I, I want to, you know, let you know basically what is going on in the industry when they trying to do different synthesis. One of the things that they, they do for the decision on the final uh, procedure, one thing that they consider is the cost, okay? Um, let's see, another um, synthesis that we can use is uh, something like that. They, they can basically here tell me that I need to have a final uh, product that has two bromines attached to the uh, hexane molecule, and they say me, oh, this uh, reagent with no more than three car, uh, no more than two carbons. So basically here at the beginning, I start with an ethene. If I have an ethene, which is a two carbon with a three bonds, I need to do uh, some uh, addition of alkanes here in order to get six carbons together. And then I need to do a, a hydroboration or bromium in order to add the bromium molecule, okay? So here, uh, using the two carbons, if I'm looking only for two carbons, usually the carbon that has the bromium is the one that is implied for the carbon-carbon double bond, and before of that, the carbon-carbon triple bond, okay? So I'm starting with this one. This one, because I have the bromines attached to it is the one that is telling me this one is the one that is getting uh, double bond or triple bond, okay? Then look for the carbon next to it. That's why I have these two carbons uh, for a carbon, carbon, triple. Then I'm adding the reminder, okay? Because they tell me it's only two carbons. So these two is the one that I have for the initial, initial reagent. What is the remaining is the one that I added after the initial reagent, okay? So I have added ethyl group and ethyl group. So it will be this ethyl group here. And if I delete this ethyl group, I will end up with a two carbon reagent, which is what they told me that I start, okay? Going in the synthesis from this one to here, I need to add 
So I use a strong base with the alkane bromine. Then from here to here, I need to add an ethyl group more. Alkane bromine again with a strong base. Then from here to here, I need to look how I can convert this carbon, carbon triple bond to a single bond. But the bromine needs to be in the same carbon. In order to do that, to have the bromine in the same carbon, I need to look and see. They say that when we have an alkenes, this is the page number two for the roadmaps, alkenes, and I use halogen bromide. Halogen X, I mean HX, X, it can be any kind of halogen. Uh, so I'm using hydrogen bromine in excess, and it's telling me A, A, which give me geminal dihaloalkanes. Geminal dihaloalkanes. They say the McCormick addition to a people. So it's McCormick addition to a people. Remember, McCormick tells me that I'm sorry, I think I press something that is not the correct key. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So it's telling me McCornicoff. I'm in alkenes. Alkenes using the halogen bromide, geminal dihalohalkanes. Geminal dihalohalkanes. What you have? have a question about what is the geminal the halohal canes we can go back but I don't I don't skip okay no this is not the first ones okay um When you have, okay, here. In the addition, when you have an hydrogen ally and you want to have like an excess for hydrogen ally, what is going to happen depends based on the um, McCormick rule. If when you have something like that, okay, that you have a carbon, carbon, triple bond are you adding the halogen is getting attached to the carbon that is more stable for the carbocation and the other uh, carbon gets the hydrogen to increase the amount of hydrogen when you're adding another hydrogen ally it's happened the same thing you get this carbon is the most stable compared to the carbon Next, because has hydrogen here attached to it. So the hydrogen goes with the carbon that has more hydrogens and the halogen goes to the carbon that is more stable. So this carbon here is the most stable. So that's why it's getting attached the other halogen here. And this carbon gets the hydrogen, okay? And that is called the geminal dihalide molecule. That is, the carbon has two allies at the same time, okay? And it's all single bonds, okay? So that is the uh, name for that. So using alkenes in the row maps, we go with the halogen bromide and we get geminal dihaloalkanes. Okay. When we have vestinal, vestinal is that we have a carbon carbon. Let me see if I can do the writing here. Yeah. 
when you have the vesinal, you will have a carbon, carbon, and the halogen is getting one next to the other one. Okay. Each carbon gets one halogen. But in the geminal, you will get carbon, and in both cases, you will have an halogen in the same carbon. Okay. And if you have an excess, because it's halogen uh, bromine, you get the halogen and the carbon next to it get all the hydrogens. Okay. That's the difference between one and the other one. If you want to use the roadmap, you need to write it down to make sure, I mean, you, you get in the same uh, area. In here, we have vesinal, but it's tetra. Tetra means that you will have, for each carbon, you will have two halogen. So you will be one halogen here, and one halogen here. Because you're, I mean, it's, it's going from carbon, carbon, three bonds, to a single bond. So that's why you get four of them, because it has an excess, okay? But if you go with the halogen, bromide or the halogen ally, you will get halogens on the same carbon and the carbon next to it gets the hydrogens. That is the McCormick because basically you need to have that relationship where basically once you get from the triple bond, the double bond, the McCormick is ruling the double bond equivalency and basically telling us that it's more stable that the hydrogen gets attached to the carbon that has more hydrogens and making this carbon a more stable carbocation. okay? So that's why they do like that, okay? And when you have something like that, but you get a geminal dihalide, okay? And going back, So when you have something like that and you have the excess for the hydrogen bromine, what is going to happen is that here, if they get uh, the bromine here, you will get bromine here and bromine here. I mean, in this case, it doesn't matter which one gets the bromine because, I mean, you will have more and more. And this case, this one, when they get the first bromine, it will be uh, stable and then gets the other bromine. And also in this case here, the other carbon, if they get the first bromine, they get stable. The other one gets the hydrogen, that one gets the hydrogen, the other one gets the bromine. So it will be the same kind of molecule. And also when you look, you have ethyl group, ethyl group, which is a symmetric molecule, okay? It will be only one product uh, for, uh, this kind of uh, of uh, geminal uh, dihalide. Okay. Um, any questions? I think I cover most of them. Um, you will have some uh, problems uh, in the chapter seven mastering. If you go in the in, in my courses. I put some uh, problems, they have the answer already. Um, try to do some uh, problems like that to, you know, you know, to practice. Also, um, for the quiz, it will, uh, it will be asking how you do some kind of synthesis. I mean, no synthesis, reactions. But if, because we cover synthesis, it's already, we cover mostly of the reactions. So they will ask you something about the hydrolysis. Um, if you have this product, how you came out with this kind of recipe and how will it look like this reagent, something like that. So it will be much uh, similar to this uh, process that we do before during this lecture. So you can go ahead and do the quiz. Uh, Uh, to complete it. 
you have two attempts for the quiz, remember? Um, the ones that has the nomenclature, for example, here, when you have the carbon-carbon uh, triple bond, you need to count uh, how many carbons you have in the alkane pairing. It's very similar to the carbon double bond and to the alkanes. You need to look if you have one substituent. So in this case, when we have something like this one, you have one, two, three. If I'm counting from the right, if I'm counting for the left, one, two, three. So it doesn't matter. It's a position three. So you will have a three, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a three hexane, okay? Because it has the triple bone in the position three, okay? When we have something like this one, is one, two, three, four. For this one, okay, that has only four, is in a position one, you put one uh, booking, okay? Um, let me see one extra. Um, when you have something like this one, you have, this is two carbons and this is a cyclic molecule. The cyclic is the substituent and this is the ethene, okay? So you have ethene, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six carbons. So in this case, your substituent is a cyclic, I mean, it's in a position one. I mean, because if, if you come in from this side to this side, the triple bond is position one here and here is a position one, it doesn't matter because the cyclic start exactly in that position. So, so it's a position one, one ethene, but the cyclic goes first. So you will have a cyclic, uh, this is six carbons. So it's a cyclic hexane, okay? Um, goes, here, for example, um, okay, here is the same molecule. You have, oh, no, let me go back. Okay, no, it's not the same. This one has a three double bond here. Uh, the, sorry, the, the, the triple bond here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I'm still counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it doesn't matter if I get like that or if I get like that. So I have one, two, three. That is the, uh, the triple bond. One, two, three, four. So basically I need to start from this one because this one gets the position three. This one in this area, I get the position four. I start from this one is a position three. So that's why I have the three eptina. Eptin because it's seven carbons in total, and I have one, two, it's a methyl group. If, and then I have three, four, five, six, it's a methyl group, okay? So I have two, two dimethyl because it has two methyl groups as substituents. Then we have the uh, triple bond in a position three and it's seven carbon uh, alkane part. Okay, and at the end is changing for ene because has triple bond. Okay, remember when it was single bonds, it was obtained ene at the end. So we change it ene for ene because it's a triple bond. Okay. Um, when we have four, and the double bond is in a position, uh, sorry, the triple bond is a position one, is four carbons, butene, uh, I mean butane, you see alkane pattern, but at the end it's changing for ene because it's butene, okay? Um, I think that's cover most of them. Um, so I will uh, start, uh, I will stop for today. Uh, in the next meeting, we, I will uh, explain a little bit about the chapter eight. The chapter eight is not a complete chapter for us. It's only taking few parts because 
most of the chapter eight is included in the uh, Olga tool, okay? So chapter eight, it will be more shorter. Have a good day, Professor. Okay, have a good day. Okay, bye.